Praise the Lord. I'm Pastor Kevin Williams, Jr. And I'm First Lady Amara Farrell Williams. We greet you in the name of Jesus Christ, and we invite you to watch our sermons and Bible studies, that it may be uplifting to you. And please visit our website, gbwtalbn.org. And remember, we, we love, love you in Jesus', Jesus name. name. Amen. What a word. What a word. I think I'm about to shout. Come on, somebody just shout glory. glory. Come on, shout glory. glory. Somebody shout hallelujah. Glory to God. God is good. God is good. I'm going to introduce my, my wife. <laughs> and um, I, I tell it everywhere that I go that she is my treasure. Yes. And, 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 and that I really didn't deserve her. But God gave it to me. Glory to God. She is my treasure. <laughs> she is my treasure. But she is a, a, a wonderful uh, wife, a wonderful mother. Um, you know, I look at her all the time. She's really inspiring. She really inspires me. Because she's such a hard worker. She's always working. She's always giving of herself. She's just always giving. She lives a consecrated life. Always laying before the Lord. Always praying and fasting. I'm like, I'm hungry, girl. <laughs> She always fasting, but uh, she takes her walk with God very seriously. She takes uh, uh, her the call that God has on her life very, very, very seriously. And I'm just uh, uh, grateful to be a part of her life. And I'm just happy to see what God is doing in her life. And I'm looking forward to seeing uh, what God does moving forward in the future. So I want to introduce to you, present to some of you, my amazing, gifted, wonderful, uh, loving wife, <laughs> uh, uh, Minister uh, Mallory Nicholson. Let's greet you with a hearty amen. Hallelujah. Hey, everybody. Hallelujah. I'm not going to be before you long. Um, the title uh, of the word that I have tonight is Desperate for a Miracle. Yeah. And um, my subtopic is that nobody can stop you but you. Um, I'm going to read it. You don't have to stand, but I'm going to read from the book of Mark, um, chapter 10, verses 46 through 52. It says, and they came to Jericho, and as he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And many charged him that he should hold his peace, but he cried the more a great deal, Thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort, rise, he calleth thee. And he, casting away his garment, rose and came to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said unto him, What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the opportunity, for the doors open. Everything has been preordained and pre-set up, God, and we're just walking in it. By faith, God, we believe in you. We love you with all of our hearts, and we just ask that you have your way in this place tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you, Pastor uh, Kevin and Lady Omar, my cousins, for having me. Um, to the ministers and everyone in their respective places, to my awesome husband, you're the best. <laughs> um, I love the theme for this conference, and it's been so nice being able to hear everybody's take on this text, um, One Shot Away. When I uh, heard the text, I immediately thought about Blind Bartimaeus because he was loud, and he could not be quieted. And his shouts of desperation, Lord have mercy on me, are what produced his miracle. Blind Bartimaeus was noisy, you know, he was noisy for God because he needed something from God. And today we live in a society where it's not socially acceptable to be in need. You know, in our society, it's encouraged you to always look like you have it together, you know, for, for you to always be pretending that it's all good, to fake it, even if you've never made it, and what you really need is some help or some advice. But I don't know about you, but in this phase of my life, I, I just don't have time to be pretending. Like, either I have it or I don't. Like, either you like me or you won't, but, Either way, like, faking it is just not it, because faking is old. But Blind Bartimaeus was honest. He was different, you know? He didn't have shame in showing that he had a need, because he was desperate for a miracle. 
And when you're desperate for a miracle, you just don't care who's watching, you don't care who's judging, you just don't care what people say because the desire that's in you to see the prayer answer exceeds the desire for your image to stay perfect. Uh -huh. And I always wonder what would happen in church if we actually became desperate Jesus. for a miracle. Come on now. Blind Bartimaeus reminds me of those people who end up getting moved to the terrarium room at conferences. You know, those people at conferences who cry out in the middle of service and nobody can console them, so we just move them to the back. And everybody looks at them like they're crazy, but actually we're the crazy ones. Because many of us are sitting there in need of a miracle. God enters the room and we just sit there quiet. And I, I, like I said, I just wonder how God would respond. You know, he heard a cry of desperation from his children. And I do believe what they've been saying all night, that if there's anybody that's in need of a miracle in this place, that when you're desperate enough, anything can happen. I was just looking at that. It says, where miracles happen. I heard somebody say once that the atmosphere of expectancy is the breeding ground for your miracle. Okay. Here in the text, Jesus was in process of going to do something else. He was actually at the end of his long journey to Jerusalem, but the cries of Bartimaeus stopped him in his tracks. And the more that people told Bartimaeus to be quiet, and that he was out of order, and that he just needed to be quiet, the Bible says that the louder he yeah. yelled, and it's crazy that they tried to make him be quiet, because you know they had their sight, like uh -huh. they just didn't want him to receive his. And when I read that, I was just like, Lord, what nerve to try and block somebody from freely receiving what you already have. I mean, they should have been wheeling him up there, not trying to make him miss his opportunity. I mean, they had never been blind. Like, they didn't know what it felt like to wake up every day and not be able to see. You know, they had experienced the struggle of being overlooked and written off. They didn't know what it felt like to have to depend on others, you know, just to make it through your day. And I thought, has anybody ever been there where you feel like everybody is overlooking you and you're tired of being dependent on other people for things you need? Has anybody ever been there where you're just plain sick and tired of being blocked by people when you're just in your own lane trying to get the miracle that God has for you? Bartimaeus teaches us that when it comes to getting your miracle, you just can't be concerned about what other people think. Because there will always be a person or people in the way on the way to your miracle because people do that you know people talk about your condition when you're sick and then they block you when you attempt to get healed but i am here to tell you that if anybody's desperate enough for a miracle come on church people nobody can stop you from getting what god has for you i said nobody can keep you from getting what god has for you except you here in the text we see that bartimaeus was blind but the people could see but if we look deeper, it appears that there's another level of sight besides just the natural. Like there's natural sight, which is what we see right now, and then there's spiritual insight, which sees and discerns the things of the spirit realm, which are not visible to the naked eye. Paul talked about it in the book of Corinthians and said that as believers, we ought to be able to look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which we don't see or are not seen are eternal. So it seems that these people telling Barabbas to be quiet may have had their physical sight, but they were blind spiritually. They could not see that they were operating in their flesh, that Jesus has a willing spirit. He doesn't have respect to persons. They couldn't see that Jesus was on assignment and Bartimaeus was a part of that. For Jesus said that they that are whole have no need of a physician, but they that are sick, I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. But blind Bartimaeus, the one who lacked two healthy eyes, he had spiritual clarity, clear insight, clear vision to the point that without ever having seen God perform a miracle, he knew that Jesus had the power to make him whole. And without ever being able to read the scriptures, he called him, thou son of David. Have mercy on me, he cried, because without ever being wheeled into a camp, he had blind Bartimaeus knew that Jesus had the power on earth to forgive sin. So who was really blind? Was it the man whose eyes were closed, but his heart was open? Or was it the ones whose eyes were open, but they could not see? In Revelation 3, to the last day, church, it is written, I know thy words, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that thou were cold or hot, but because you're lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because you say I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing, and know it's not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich and white raiment that thou mayest be clothed and that the shame of thy nakedness does not appear and anoint thine eyes with eye salve that thou mayest see. That scripture is speaking prophetically to the Laodicean church. You know the last day church, the end day church and that's us. Turn to your neighbor and say that was written to us and for us. Luke Gorm he called us. Wretched, he 
you walk into situations that spiritual insight could have prevented. Blindness causes anxiety because you, you can't see a way out. You, you don't know how to fix situations. You can't see what to do next. And so many of us are walking in blindness, but if God would just open the eyes of our hearts, we too would cry out, Lord, have mercy on me because we're blind to the fact that many of us are living beneath what God has called us to be. We're blind to the potential that God has placed in us. Blind to the spiritual warfare that fights us every day. Lord God, would you open up our eyes that we can see? We need for God to open our eyes to see. Because without his touch, we will remain blind. Blind to our true spiritual condition. Blind to what's really happening in our churches, our communities, our homes. Blinded by the enemy. But if only we could see what God sees, I really believe we would cry out like blind for our healing. Blind Bartimaeus cried out, Jesus, Jesus, and the Lord heard his cry. And I don't know if there's anybody in this room tonight that is in a need of attention from the master, but I will tell you that just like blind Bartimaeus, when it's sincere, when your shout is sincere, when your praise is sincere, your, your outpour is sincere, you're so close to your miracle, to whatever it is that you're seeking God for, your breakthrough, whatever it is that you're praying for, if only we could have faith in Jesus like blind Bartimaeus, I know that God would do the impossible in our lives. And when blind Bartimaeus cried out, he caused Jesus to stand still because God stands still at the cries of his children. If you have kids, you understand this concept because when you hear your children or hear children anywhere crying, the first thing you do is stop and listen to see if it's your kid, right? And this is what Jesus did. He stopped. When he heard Bartimaeus crying and he said, he said, come here. What is it that you need? And I ask you now, what is it that you need? What did you come for? I'm not talking about just coming to do a church as usual. What is it you've been praying for? I'm closing now, but I believe Bartimaeus had been praying for years. I believe that he was like us in church, praying for a lifetime for God to respond. I believe that he was waiting, waiting on God waiting for this moment, this opportunity of a lifetime. And when it came, he wasn't willing to let anything or anybody stop him from getting his answered prayer. And so many of us have been waiting a long time for God to hear us. We've been praying. We've been pleading. We've been sitting in the same place, desperate for a miracle. What stops us? If nobody can stop us but ourselves, it has to be us. Blind Bartimaeus' response when Jesus called his name was to throw aside his garment and jump up and go and get it. But if he didn't have faith enough to go and get it, he would have died blind. If he had never cried out, he would have stayed blind forever. If he had never ignored the voices of the naysayers, the negative people around him trying to block him from his blessing, he would have missed it. Because that really was the moment of a lifetime went down in history. That was an opportunity that would never come again. It was a moment that he had been praying for. We don't have forever. All we have is a season, a window of opportunity to fulfill the call and purpose that is on our lives. And we have to seize it while we can and become all that God has destined us to be. Uh -huh. We don't have forever. I declared a long time ago, along with Noah, that we didn't care who you know, had a problem with it. Like blind Bartimaeus, you know, we was gonna be loud. The louder we were, the more people said, be quiet. And the more they told us, be quiet, the louder my, my praise God, because God just started moving miraculously in my life. He came into my hospital room. He touched my kidneys. He touched my heart. He stilled yep. the blood in my blood bags. They told me I would die, but God, gave me a second chance. He saved my life two times over. And miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle has he done in my life ever since I decided to trust him and live by faith. So I can tell you from a real place that if you're in here now and you've been praying for something and you're desperate for a miracle, when you get desperate enough to stop caring what others think because that has to happen, mm. or what you look like and you get tired of being blind, you really can see yourself, you know, you're not blind anymore, you can see yourself. Because sometimes we're blinded because we've been in church our whole lives, we can't see ourselves. But we have to be able to see ourselves in order for God to deliver us so that we can cry out to him. That's when God will make you whole. Nobody can stop you but you, but when you're ready, 
You really are just one shot away. Jesus. Amen.